here is a graphical representation of the efficient unemployment rate. And you know, efficient tightness and so on. That's simple. So let me put on the y axis, I'm going to put my tightness as usual. X axis, I'm going to put employment. Then I'm going to introduce the size of the labor force. So here I have tightness, here I have employment, here I have my labor force, here I have my zero. Okay. So <coughs> As a social planner, we said the social planner is subject to the matching function, matching process, and so on. So the labor supply that translates tightness into employment is still valid even when we put ourselves in the shoes of a social planner. So we'll have, um, we'll have a labor supply, so that's going to still be valid. And actually, so this is the labor supply we have. So the labor supply is actually going to give us we put ourselves in the shoes of a social planner, it's going to give us the employment L that's sustainable for a given tightness theta. And that's the same, that's exactly the same as uh, the labor supply. Okay. Um, all right. But we know that as a social planner, we are not interested in maximizing that labor supply, right? Because this is maximizing employment. Instead, what we're interested in is maximizing the number of producers because that's what would maximize output. So how can I figure out what is the number of producers here? Well, it turns out you can. Uh, so actually, the number of producers is going to look something like this. And this point... Uh, This point that I have here, where the number of producers is zero, that's the point theta n. I'm going to get back to that. So, um, okay. So the labor supply, this is giving us the number of employed workers for any given of tightness. Now, this new curve that I've just plotted, this is n of theta. And so this is giving actually the number of producers for any given uh, level of tightness. Okay? Um, and so now we actually we can see very clearly on the labor market for each level of tightness we can see the three categories. So the three type of workers that we have. So you can see here we have some people who are producers. Then the gap between the number of people who are producers and the number of people who are employed at the number of recruiters. And then the number of people who are not employed. So here, because I have a low tightness, it's a lot of them. These are the unemployed. Okay, so now we, have, we see very clearly on this diagram the three categories of uh, workers. Okay? And so where is the efficient unemployment rate? In the point where uh, it's the point where the number of producers is maximized. So actually it's going to be somewhere here. So you can see here I have a derivative that's zero. So it means that my curve that gives me the number of producers is actually maximized. So this point here the number of producers is maxed. Maximized. So this means that uh, this is a point of efficiency. Okay, and because that's why you have the most producers in your economy. So here, you know, we do, we, as a social planner, I'm trying to design the level of tightness that I want to enforce, and I'll be able to do that by posting vacancies. The point that I'm targeting is that point, where the number of producers are maximized. That's where I'll have the most 
output. And hence, it's where I would have the highest welfare at that point. Okay, so that's where I want to be. So basically, that point here, that's where I have my tightness theta star. Uh, that's where I have efficiency. Okay, and then from that, so then you can see, uh, then it's easy to see So here, you will have n stars, the efficient number of producers. Here, you will have the efficient number of recruiters. And here, you will have u star. You know, so it's the level of unemployment at your efficient tightness. So this is efficient unemployment level. So that's your efficient level of unemployment. That's exactly that gap. So now we can ask, so what happens if your tightness is below theta star? You know, if, uh, so what's going to happen? So let's say my tightness is below theta star. So let's say you have a tightness that's here. Okay, so, you know, I'm a social planner. I picked, you know, by mistake that level of tightness. What's the issue in my economy? Well, you can see the problem here is that um, if you pick that tightness, your level of unemployment, U, is bigger than U star. Okay? So here, you have too much unemployment. Okay, so U is bigger than U star, you have too much unemployment. And what does, that, what does that mean? It means that you have just too many people that are idle. Okay, there's too much idleness in your economy. And so why do you care about that? Well, the problem is that if you have too many people who are idle, it means you will have too few people who are employed, and as a result, you won't have enough producers. And you can, um, you can see it here. The number of producers, N, will be less than the optimal number of producers. Uh, so here there are just too many people who do not, who are not produce, you know, who are not part of firms and who are not producing any output. So that's the, that's the issue here. If there's just um, too many workers who are not in firms, okay? And as a result, uh, you just don't have enough producers, you don't have enough production. So that's a world where there's too much unemployment. Here, we, sometimes you will see that um, in the literature, people say that this is a labor market that is uh, slack. Because the tightness is not high enough. Okay? So it's the opposite of a tight labor market. That's a slack labor market. So you have too much unemployment, and as a result, you don't have enough producers. Now, another situation that imagine that as a, as, a, as a social player, you make the opposite mistake. You put a tightness theta, now that's too high, okay, somewhere here. So what's going to happen here? So you can see your unemployment level is given here. Now, what do we see? In fact, now the level of unemployment is too low, is below. Uh, what we had, what we had at the optimal point. So here, u is actually less than u star. So now the, the issue is not that we have too much unemployment. The issue now is that we have too little unemployment. So that seems strange, right? Like you wonder, like why is having too little unemployment? But too little unemployment means that we have lots of people who are employed. It's great, you know. It's going. It's going to mean that you know. There should. There, it should mean that there are lots of production and welfare is really as high as possible. But here, that's not how it is. 
you know, you have to remember uh, the world is a little bit more subtle. When you have too little unemployment, what's going to be the problem? Well, so it means the tightness is very high. But now think about the recruiting process. If you have very high tightness, it means that to fill a vacancy it takes a very long time. It means that firm has to devote a lot of workers to recruiting. And in fact, when unemployment is too low, too many workers in firms are devoted to recruiting to the point that actually the number of people who are then producing is inefficiently low. So here the issue is not that not enough people have jobs. The issue is that among firms there are too, too many people who are devoted to recruiting instead of producing. And you can see it very clearly, it appears here. You can see that there is a huge number of people who are devoted to recruiting. So there is too much recruiting going on. And to the point that actually, if you look at the number of uh, producers, again, it's too small, it's inefficiently low. But for a different reason as before. We are again in a situation where there are not enough producers compared to the efficient situation. So output is less than efficient. Uh, but now the reason is not that there are too many people who do not have a job, like it was before when tightness was low. Now the reason is that we have too many workers who are allocated to recruiting instead of producing. Okay, So this is what we call a tight labor market. That's another sort of efficiency. Now the inefficiency is not that too many people don't have a job. Now the inefficiency is that among the people who have a job, too many of them are allocated to recruiting. Okay? Um, so, and you know, that's the fact that we can have this situation that explains why we don't want to have zero unemployment, or that explains why we don't want to have a tiny amount of unemployment. Because in this world, if you have a tiny amount of unemployment, it's going to be very hard for firms to recruit workers, you know, to maintain their size. That means that, there, you know, vacancies will take a long time to be filled, and that means that you'll have to allocate a large share of your workforce to recruiting, which is not efficient um, because that's not that's not going to allow you to produce a lot of services and goods that are valued by people. Okay, and so that's why actually the efficient unemployment rate is, is not zero. It's not one either. It's somewhere in between where we've optimized, you know, so that there's just the right amount of people who are unemployed and search for job, and just the right amount of people who are doing the recruiting. So that at the end, the number of people who are doing the producing can be maximized. Okay, uh, so this U star that we have here, that's the efficient unemployment rate. The theta star is the efficient um, tightness. So that would, that's going to be um, the target. <coughs> this U star here, that's going to be, we'll see, uh, in practice, that's the target for the government. That's what, uh, that's what governments are going to try to target. They'll try to target also that tightness. So they, you know, governments in the US, for instance, and in other countries to respect to bring their economy to uh, full employment, what they want to do, what that means in practice, that they want to hit that theta star, U star target. Okay. Um, and so how they're going to do that? Well, we'll see, you know, there are several ways to do it, but you can do it with monetary policies that control the aggregate demand, that will then control the labor demand. You could do it uh, with fiscal policy, you know, change to taxation, to the number of people who are employed in the government, try to hit that. Um, 